Okay. Well, good, uh, good lunchtime, everybody. So I'm, I'm uh, the noon show. So I'm going to try and stick to, try and stick to my, uh, my, my talk with you guys. However, I will say that it's really tough being up here and, and watching all of these talks. So I just want to thank all of the speakers that have gone before me and all the speakers going after me because you're all so inspiring. That my brain is um, flooding right now, so I'm, I'm connecting all of the dots, and yet I'm still trying to stay focused on this. So, konnichiwa. That's my only Japanese word. So you're going to have to listen to me on. I'll, I'll be on channel two for all of those listening. I think. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell you what design is. I'm going to I'm going to actually just uh, um, tell you a point of view that I have about what's happened in design over the last sort of 10 or so years, just because I find, I find that particularly inspiring. So before I get into that, I'm going to, I want to um, uh, tell you a kind of little, a little problem that I have that goes on in my world. So this, this is, as, as I know in Japan, you're very used to this, this image of kind of drinking, going out to dinner, meeting new friends, talking to old friends. This happened again last night, and this exact scenario happened last night. So when I do this, which I enjoy doing, the same as everyone else, my dreaded question always comes about. And I, it, it happened last night. And so my dreaded question is, so what do you do for a living? So when, when that comes up, and it always pops up, I take a kind of moment, and, and um, I kind of stutter. I, feel, I don't feel nervous, but I kind of stutter. And I don't stutter because I don't know what I do. Um, you know, it's pretty easy uh, what I do. I'm a designer. That's, that's a really simple thing to say. The, the, uh, the issue that I have is that it leads to my second most ready question, which I then know is coming. So I kinda, you know, it's like, do I say I'm a designer? Yeah, I'm a designer. And then, and then somebody invariable will say, so what do you design? <laughs> um, at that point, <laughs> I'm not stuttering anymore. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in a little bit of a fix. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. That's why the question mark was, I don't really know the answer. Um, my, my answer can be um, anything from cell phones to integrated systemic solutions for developing countries. You know, at, we, I have participated in, in both those design opportunities. So um, it's not that I think you can pin it down. Um, I think that uh, it's, it's something that has become somewhat democratized. So it's, uh, I was talking to my little brother yesterday, and he's training to be a journalist, and he's now in flux because everybody's a journalist. And I think the same thing, you know, um, everybody is a designer. Absolutely everybody's a designer. They can have an opinion, they can do design, they can critique design. Um, I, I, and I think that's great. I, you know, I want you all to know I think that's actually great. Um, but I think that th there's still an opportunity for us to kind of like keep, keep pushing that forward. So like I said, I'm going to give you a little, a little taste of what, I, what goes on in my brain. So ho hopefully it will be somewhat clear. So my little story is I, I started, uh, I'll start when I was wandering down Covent Garden and I saw this sofa in, in the window. I don't know any of you who know who Ron Arad is, but um, he designed this sofa. And I walked into to his shop, didn't know who he was, loved the sofa. Um, don't know why I loved the sofa, I just loved the sofa and I wanted one. So um, I went in, sat down the sofa because it didn't fit my apartment, or my apartment, my bedroom. God, I was 12 years old, I didn't have an apartment. <laughs> my bedroom, didn't fit my bedroom. And I sat down with this guy and we designed a slightly smaller one. And the slightly smaller one fit, and I bought it. Or oh, I didn't buy it either because I was 12. <laughs> I persuaded my dad to buy it. And, uh, and the guy was Ron Arad. And so I have, no, I have no idea what he was thinking at the time. I didn't really know what was going on. But if you fast forward um, um, 14 years, I ended up going to, to the RCA. And I learned a lot of things at college, <laughs> as I think most people do. But what I, the kind of thing that I wanted to kind of like bring to light, the thing that I think is, is interesting for me to think about, the thing that has evolved is this idea of form, form follows function. And it was, I think it was, a lot of people have, have tried to own it, but I think this, uh, Louis Sullivan was the first person to coin that phrase. Um, and I think that this debate um, of form and function has kind of yielded an amazing amount of creativity, experimentation, conversations that has generated some of the world's best design solutions. And when I say design solutions, I mean um, integrated systems that help the world. I mean chairs, I mean boats, whatever they may be. And so, you know, I think, it ha I think that debate helped to create this. Um, 
This is, as, in my opinion, again, <laughs> this is as close to, to art with it still being called design that you can get because this is actually called a chair. And for any of you that have ever sat in this chair, it's incredibly uncomfortable, yet it's one of the most famous chairs in the world. It's on show as this design classic chair. Um, I think you know, it's, it's helped to create things along with the chair. It's helped to create uh, um, Victor Papanak's um, paraffin radio that was developed back in 1962 for developing countries. So it's a, para it's a radio that runs on paraffin. And when the paraffin's gone, you stuff it full of cow dung, and it runs again, and it keeps running. And it costs nine cents to produce. Um, but I think the same, you know, well, if you, if you, you know, when you read, the same debate helped him create that. And then, uh, I, I'm sorry this is a little bit dark, but this, you know, this is the, the, the Riva Aquarama boat that I'm sure a lot of you have seen in movies and print and stuff. And it's just, you know, this completely pampers to the luxury market. But yet, it's the same debate has managed to, to, to kind of help create this. So I think um, I'm ju I was just trying to sort of show how that, that debate did all those wonderful things. I think that something, and I, this is where all the synapses started shooting off. I was talking to Jesper last night about it as well. Um, I think that uh, something has happened in the last, I would say, 10 years for, for me personally, um, from the dot-com burst to the, to the recent recession, where Certainly, a lot of pieces have started to change um, for, for uh, people. And I think that you know, some people will have a great economic uh, reasoning behind the, the, the crash. Others will say that there was a kind, of, a kind of consumer or social or an ethical crisis that was behind a lot of that as well. So I think that um, you, know, you can take the idea of form um, and move it through to aesthetics. And it's not different, it's just an evolution of how we've seen it. So form was very much based around the sort of like, it, you know, when we thought about it as designers, it was very much based around the geome geometry of something, the shape, how it looked in the world. Um, aesthetics, I just love the way that it's quotes it up there. It's the branch of philosophy dealing with such notions as beauty. So I'm starting even to get to the talk that was, you know, not the last talk, the talk before me. It's, it's getting into that same place. I think if you take function, which is essentially... In, uh, you know, in, 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 in the last hundred years has been very mechanical. It's been very much about how something works. How does it fit together? Do the, do the mechanics of it work correctly? Are the lines are right to um, purpose, which is actually the reason for which something exists or is being done or made. Um, so I think that the conversation in, 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 my, in my world, in the design world, over the last 10 years has made this evolution. I'm not entirely sure that anybody has actually talked about it, but it has made this, this evolution for me. And what's happened is that's created a whole bunch of different opportunities to exist for businesses, along with all the other things that have happened. So, you know, I chose Starbucks specifically because I wanted, I wanted to be controversial. I don't know if it's that controversial here, but, you know, I think this is a company that has reinvented itself. You know, the stock price fell overnight from $40 down to about $8. All of the people that were there that just wanted to be rich left. And it was left up to a bunch of people to decide whether or not they wanted to recreate this company with some purpose. And so, you know, you walk into the new coffee shops that they're doing, and they just look like great coffee shops. Like the other ones looked like great coffee shops 15 years ago. But right now, but now um, they're using um, um, LED lighting. There's either low or no, um, no, no toxic paints that are in there. 40% of the, of the, of the um, water used is recycled back through the system. So you walk in, you don't see any difference. They're not screaming about it. But the, the stores, the restaurants are completely different to what they used to be now. Um, this one I, I put in because th these are our friends at, at, at uh, Hakahodo did this. I think advertising is one of the industries that, that really struggled um, because I think they just wanted to sell more stuff for their clients, and I think this is a great campaign that actually took on a higher purpose. It had a meaning behind it, and it's, and it's got legs, right? It's lasted a long, long time and has really sp spoken to people's deeper meanings. And then I wanted to end on a kind of um, shoe. Uh, and Nike has been on this journey for the last 15 years. What's, what's astonishing to me is this, this shoe, every time I show this, everybody says, wow, I want one of those. It's beautiful. And yet, you know, this is made of either trash recycled material, or um, zero impact adhesives. So this, this shoe can actually be made, and you can feel really good about this thing, and you can wear it, and you can buy it. There is no compromise in it at all. So for me, when I'm asking myself, either as a consumer or as a designer, 
you know, do I want something? We all still want something. We're all buying clothes. We're all buying stuff to associate ourselves, to project ourselves. So do I want whatever it is? Do I like it? And does it actually align with my values? Um, that's what I asked myself. And then I had one thought as I was landing, so I changed the presentation, which is, goes back to the, the presentations two presentations ago, which is, if there's any country that I can think of in the world that actually gets aesthetics and purpose beyond and above everything else, it's Japan. So the only problem I'm having in Japan is actually getting business to really adopt design as, a, as an equal um, tool in, in their toolkit. Thank you.